Okay, first off, excuse the suit, sorry. Um, but in this video, what we're gonna cover is in Power Automate, there's some things that should happen in your Power Automate. One, the from address for all your email notifications. The approval request, make sure that has the right properties and tagging so that way it looks professional and doesn't look like it's coming from an individual and you represent the request correctly. Two, for the approval request, especially when coupled with Office 365 groups, how do you make that happen in a Power Automate way? A lot to unpack here. We're gonna take a strong use of variables, but it's all good and it's all great. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so let me show you the problem that we have currently with our solution. So here, uh, this is under Madison, and Madison is going to request the site. So she's going to call this the Grady Migration. And this is just going to be a generic project site uh, for a thousand users, is uh, internal only. Madison is going to be the main site owner, and then we're going to, she's going to make Kevin, and then this is a sample migration site. So now what she's going to do, she's going to go ahead and submit this. And if we look at the email, what's going to happen is that she's going to receive an email. It's going to have a confirmation that the request was received. The problem is the request came from Deshaun Clark. She's going to have the details of the email regarding the, but there's no link to confirm the request or to get the link to the actual request. If I switch the persona over to Andre, Andre's gonna get the email approval request and the approval request is gonna say it was requested by Deshaun Clark, even though Madison submitted the information and Andre as her approver does not have information to link to the actual request. The other issue is that Andre is one of many users that fulfill these requests. So if Andre is out of the office, this request just sits in the inbox and the process just kind of stalls until Andre's available. But we have other, re other technicians within the Office 365 request. So if you look at Manage Teams, here you can see all the members who could potentially act on that request. They're all SharePoint admins and they can all fulfill that request. But right now everything is going to Andre. So, so in this video, looking at the details of this Power Automate, we wanna walk through how to add the link to be embedded inside the email and the approval, how to change the from email address to where it doesn't always come from Deshaun, and also with the add approval request, make sure that the requester is the person who submitted the request. So the first thing we wanna do is to add the hyperlink inside of the send email. So to add a hyperlink, you can simply grab the link item token. But the problem with this is, is that it's not gonna be hyperlink. Create a variable. So here I'm going to initialize a variable, then call this variable link. So let's just call this var link. Change the type to string. And then what we wanna do is create an anchor tag and simply wrap the uh, site request text with this anchor tag. So this is gonna be the site request and then the URL would be that link to item. So you may be asking, well, how come I didn't grab this HTML and they're just embedded in the body of the email? And that's what we talked about in the last video. Embedding this as HTML inside of the body of the email in HTML mode forces this entire body to stay in HTML mode and we lose our easy ability to manipulate this. So here I just wanna copy this line item here and then maybe do something like this, say uh, link to the request, right? And then I can bold this and now I can copy this and everywhere that I need to use the link I can just simply paste it in, okay? And then tweak this to get rid of the extra spaces, so on and so forth. So now my email confirmations should have the link to the request. Now the question is, what about the approval request? So the approval request is easy because I don't have to write an anchor tag since this is using markdown syntax. I can simply just specify the link to the item using the raw token. And then for the description, I can just simply type in site, okay? And then that's gonna send it off. So now if I save this all and replay Madison's request, I should now get a email notification with the hyperlinks needed. 
So now let me switch over to Madison Persona, click on email, here's my site request of that request. If I switch over to Andre, who is the sole approver, and look at the request here, I can find the link to the request, click on that item as an approver, and get, again, all of the details of that particular request. Okay, so that's how you simply drop those uh, confirmations in. So the next thing we wanna do is to remove Deshaun as the requested by in the approver action, as well as the from it, uh, the from address for the confirmation email. So in order to do that, the confirmation email, the from address is based off of the service account needed. Here I have a service account that we can use that would be the from email address. So when it comes to the approval piece, that request is actually hidden under the advanced options. And then here you can have the requester and it's looking for the email address. So we can simply go by the created by and then just use the email attribute from the created by column. And then that would change the information there. The other piece we wanted to do was to change account versus the current app maker. And then other way you can do that, again, if I go to the owners of this, again, make the service account the owner. And usually this probably will be followed up with some type of help desk ticket asking the uh, engineers to associate this service account to their uh, approval action. So here, if I go to the service account, log in, share it with me. Let me hit refresh. I should see another flow pop in. There's a site request, click edit here and then just change the connector to my connection, which would be the service account connection, save this all, and now switch over back to Deshaun. And when we click edit, the approval action would now be set to the service account. So I hit the list and it's hard to determine because both of these have the same generic name. So it's hard to determine which one is Deshaun and which one is the service account. So the best way to do that, once you have that done to your flow, is to go to your connections, go to edit. This is where it would explicitly highlight the username for each connector. And then here you can see other connectors that has the Clardo 365, which is the username for Deshaun. We can go ahead and remove that since that's not in use. And then that way it won't be confusing when you're looking at the various service accounts inside the Power Automate Studio. So now that we have this uh, all set up, we can rerun Madison's last request. And let's just confirm that the emails are coming through as expected. So now if I switch over to Madison's account here, I get a nice, beautiful email with a from address with an account that uh, that's generic and all the information I need for Madison as a confirmation. I can also switch over to Andre and look at the request that came over to Andre as an approver. Here I show the requested by by the appropriate user now, not by Deshaun. And then also notice this, the created by is now associated to the service account and not Deshaun. And now everything seems to be um, working as expected and labeled as expected. So now what we can do, if we want to, as Andre, reject this, this, and then click submit, what's gonna happen now, if we switch over to Madison, she's gonna get the denied email, but there is no reason that comment that was left by the approver, even if it was approved or rejected, the comment on that feedback is not available to us in this email. So we wanna fix that. So in order to do the comments, what you wanna do is to create another variable, and I'll show you here in, in a second why you want to create, store this in a variable. And we just want to initialize the variable. Let's just call this var comments, and then change this to the string, and then just let that initialize to an empty string. And now when we get down to the decision, if it was approved or not, let's go ahead to the denied side, and then set this variable to the output or the comments of the approver. So here I'm going to grab the var comments, grab the value, search on the comments token, and this is going to be the responses comments token for that approval action. So here I can capture that and that's going to set in a variable. Notice as soon as I set, selected that token, because uh, there can be many responses or many approvers responding to this request, it actually collects them into a collection. And since it's a collection, it applies this applied 
to apply to each. If I would have used this comments directly in the email box and the email action, then this entire email action would have been wrapped in this apply each. And that's not the case. So now what we want to do, we want to move this in position to where we can use this. Now I run into this issue every now and then to where I can't move these actions around. A simple fix is to add a placeholder action and it could be anything. So let's just add a, um, let's just add another send email, right? And what this is going to do, this is going to provide enough real estate to where now I can manipulate these. I can get this in position and do what I need to do uh, here. Let's just do comments, line break, and then add in the comments variable. There you see nice and clean, no apply each uh, to my email. And now that I have these in position and they're ready to go, I can just go ahead and delete this placeholder action. Okay. So now if you wanted to, you can apply the exact same uh, scenario here on the approved side, which probably makes sense, but I'll leave that up to your imagination. Okay. So the last thing we want to do is to get Andre out of being the hard coded or the sole approver uh, for these approval actions. Now, if you look at the teams, as I mentioned before, this office 365 request team has multiple users. So let's build this in a dynamic way to where if there is an additional team member, all of the, uh, the site owner or the department manager have to do is add the new member to the Microsoft team site, which they're going to do anyway, because they're going to be collaborating with other files about office requests, other issues reported, maybe a task list for the team, uh, so on and so forth. So this is going to be a natural addition for a new team member. And we want this to just work with that flow in a dynamic way. So in order to to send approvals to groups, you're going to have to do jump through a few hoops. So the first thing you want to do is to bring in the action to bring in your Office 365 group. So let's just search on Office 365 group because that's <clears throat> that's going to be the security group um, or the underlying group that's associated to that Microsoft Teams. You just go ahead and select that. Then there's an action that lists the group members. This is what we want. And then it's going to ask which group that we want to list the members from. And that's going to be our Office 365 request which has the exact same name if our, as our team. Now, once I have this, this is going to, again, be an array or a collection of items. So I need to store it into a variable. So we're going to use the variable one more time. So let's just do init var var, and then let's just call this var approvers. And then the string type is going to be, I'm sorry, the type is going to be string. And again, we're going to let, allow that to initialize to an empty string. And then uh, for my group members, I can just add an action here and I have to append because what's going to happen, this thing, this, um, this is going to loop through and grab all of the members. So here, if I scroll down to the token section to where I have list group members, which is the reflecting of this action here, I can see the items, all the attributes available to me. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the user principal name in Office 365 world. This is just going to be their email address and select that. And again, I expected this apply to each because I know that this is a member in plural or collection. And now that I use this a pin, every time this loops, it's going to add these to or pin the the new token value to the end of the string. And I want to separate that with a semicolon in the space, which is the natural way of separating multiple email addresses when you're sending the email. Now, once I have that done, I can go down to the approval section, wipe out Andre, and now just drop and replace that with the var variables, which is again, it's going to be a collection of semicolon space email addresses. And this is going to go to all those members as a group. And now I just need to save this off. And now I can can retest. Now notice what happens. So now what I can do, I can go to Andre and nothing should change here because Andre's part of that group as well. I'm just clear this out so we can see the request come in. And this request came in. And if I select on it, you can notice that it is uh, addressed to Andre. And then there's all the de details of that e uh, of that request. I can also switch over to Deshaun, click on that. Deshaun as well get the exact same request addressed to Deshaun. And I can go to Madison. And here we have Madison again with the exact same request because all everyone's all part of that group. Now, now here's an interesting view. If I switch over to teams and go to the approval section within teams, all of my approvals
approvals will actually be listed here. But I get a little bit more detail, which I love. So here is the recent request. And not, not only does it show who it was requested by, but all of the members that that request went to, right? So now if I wanted to, I can click on this grading migration and then I can approve it and just say, this looks good. Now I'm approving this as Madison, which is interesting because she's kind of approving her own stuff. But you know, we just have Madison approve this. And because that went to the group, now if I switch over to uh, Andre and I click on that request, as soon as the, the email realized that I'm there, it's going to get a signal from the, the, the back end service that says this request has already been process. Let me double click on it to kind of trigger it. So this should update and there it is. So this say this request has already been processed and the approve reject options are removed from me, right? And eventually it probably takes some time to, to update, but eventually this will update in the, um, update in the uh, preview. There it is. It finally updated in the preview section. But not only uh, do I get that notification or that response uh, as a member or a group of users that receive that request to approve, I can also go into the, my teams under Andre. Again, remember Madison approved this. So me coming in as Andre, I can actually view this. Let me hit refresh so I can see. Make sure I'm just looking at the latest and greatest. So now I can go in here and I can see exactly who requested it, who approved it. And if there were comments left of that approval, all that's going to be in the paper trail for this approval action. Now, again, when you're viewing the approval action in Microsoft Teams, you get way more information and detail compared to if you were viewing the same request in Outlook. And the one last thing we wanted to confirm is that even though Madison approved her own information, we also wanted to see, um, oh, that's not here because we didn't see it. So that's how you do the approval actions for in uh, Power Automate. So that's how you do the approval actions in Power Automate. So as you saw, we can change, uh, we can add in the needed information using variables to, to add a lot of detail using variables. We can now add a lot of details and granularity to our Power Automate. So now not only can we add the link to the item and do that in an elegant way within the body of our email and still maintain our rich text editing and not be forced to use HTML. The other way that we use variables is for the comments. So as these approvers make a decision on these approval requests, we can capture those comments in an elegant way. So we have to deal with the apply to each. That's a necessary evil. But with variables, we can contain it and have it only impact the piece that it needs to impact and then just use the variable as a variable as a regular token inside the body of our email. And then lastly, what we've done is list out a dynamic way of approvers and list that out here in the um, approval request. And that's going to dynamically grab membership from our Microsoft Teams or the M365 group root for our Microsoft team and then store all of those email addresses in a single variable. Again, keeping our approval requests elegant, not wrapped into an imply each loop and, you know, having that variable be contained or take the hit with the looping information and then the right syntax and formatting and then just leverage the outcome of that within the approval body of our action. Okay, so that's it for this video. I'm super excited about the next video that's coming up because now we're going to get into the meat of the request where the engineers will actually use uh, some type of scripting or some type of code to replicate a site in its entirety. If there's any questions, leave them in the comments section. Until then, take care of yourself and I'll see you soon.